your liberty. Demand your manifestation in the name of Jesus. Demand your recovery. Demand your recovery. Every day uh, that has been stolen, uh, that has been placed uh, in satanic cages, uh, we command it break uh, and we take a recovery. Demand your recovery. Demand your recovery. Total recovery. Total recovery. Total recovery. Total recovery. Total recovery. Very soon, the word of God will be coming to you. Lift up your voice and pray that the word will make a way for you. I am to that the word will open doors for you. Lift up your voice, the entrance of his word, bring it lighter. Lift your voice and pray today as the word is coming. Let it open doors. Let the word go before me. Let the word go before me as a light into my path. Every darkness will give way at the word of God. Lift your voice and pray. Take me to a new level by your word. Carry me to a new level by your word this afternoon. In the name of Jesus. I am to son. 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 of recovery, unto a realm of favor, unto a realm of faith, to success, oh my God, Yabashana, Yabashana, Ayashana, Yabandala, as you speak your word, oh Lord, this afternoon, let it enter my spirit, to lift me up, unto a new level, to lift me up, unto a higher ground, Alamosa, lift up your voice, wherever you are weak, wherever you are fallen, at the word of God, you will rise on your feet, your marriage will rise, your business will rise, your health will rise, your children will rise, at the word of God, I am Ah, 
that you are a prayer answering God. Amen. This is the confidence that we have in him. Yes, Lord. When we ask anything according to his way, he yes. hears us. Amen. He that speaketh in unknown tongue, speaketh not unto man, but unto God. Amen. For no man understandeth him, how beat in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. He make intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Amen. By prayer, with supplication, and thanksgiving. Yes, Lord. Let your request be made known unto God. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. The peace of God. Shall keep your heart. Amen. Lift your hands and thank him for answer prayer. Father, we thank you. Give it Thank you for answer prayer. Wherever you are watching from, thank you, Father, thank God for answer prayer. Thank you that you answer prayer. Thank you that you answer prayer. We thank you for the manifestation of the prayers we have prayed. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God, everlasting Father. I Give him that to worship him. Give him Bless the King of Kings. Every hand left up before the master. We we'll celebrate Jesus. Akara Oh Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. The Lord will surely reward you for your sacrifice. Amen. Because he's a faithful God. Yes. And he doesn't promise and fail. Hallelujah. The confidence we have is that if there are people to pray, there is a God to answer. Yes, sir. Think about this. Think about this. This is my confidence in prayer. If God will not answer prayer, he will not ask us to pray. Can I say that again? If God will not answer prayer, he will not ask us to pray. So if you have prayed, God will answer your prayer. Amen. Father, let your word come with authority and power. And bless your people. And open the heavens and let your word go forth on him. Anoint these lips of clay. And let me declare the oracles of the Lord. Speak in the language you understand. In Jesus' mighty name, you may be seated. Akona. Jidifu 
As a covenant believer, be able to live a life full of peace and prosperity is part of your salvation package. Give me attention. Hallelujah. I say as a covenant believer, be able to live a life full of peace and prosperity is part of your salvation package. Because I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as you're so prospering. I'll make the statement again, and I expect you to say amen as, as a covenant believer. Remember yesterday, I started talking about covenant. Hmm? As a covenant believer, being able to live a life full of what? Peace. Somebody say peace. And prosperity. Is part of your salvation package. But, but the enemy fight you for this. And that is why we are in a battle. Tell your neighbor we are in a battle. If we refuse to fight, we'll be losers. And if we decide to fight, uncompromisingly, we'll be winners. Because in the kingdom, have you ever thought about it? Jesus said, no, it's Apostle Paul who said, fight the good fight of faith. Fight what? So faith itself is a fight. Hmm. And refusing to fight the fight of faith makes you <laughs> a perpetual loser. So there is no substitute for it. God wants us to live a life, peace and prosperity. But the enemy fight that one. That means that your prosperity is a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Your peace is a threat to the kingdom of darkness. So we don't have a choice than to fight. I'm still going to talk about some benefit of fasting. If you smile a little bit and change your face, I'll preach well. Amen. Hallelujah. So that is why we fast. Write this one down, number one. Fasting will break the spirit of poverty over your life and will prepare the way for prosperity. Fasting will break the spirit of poverty. Tell your neighbor, poverty is a spirit. Benefit of fasting. Fasting will break the spirit of poverty over your life and will prepare the way for prosperity. Joel chapter 2 verse 15. I'm picking some portions in Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2 verse 15. Can I say that again? Fasting will break the spirit of poverty over your life and will prepare the way for prosperity. Now, much as giving is what makes the way for prosperity, you also need enablement to prosper. Hallelujah. You have to give, but sometimes you are giving, but there are forces that are fighting the harvest. That is where fasting has come in. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. Before we come to Joel, I am the Lord that given you what? Power to prosper. It means that there is an enablement for prosperity. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, but thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is he that given thee what? Power. Power is the ability to do. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh? There's a difference between power and authority. Authority is delegated power. Hallelujah. One of them is Junamites, one of them is Azusia. I don't want to go there. Hallelujah. Huh? Now, but thou shalt remember the Lord your God. You see, that giveth thee power to prosper. So, sometimes, the spirit of poverty that has fought. Now, when I talk about poverty, it's not just a matter of not having money. Because prosperity is not money. Money is part of it. But it's not just having money. When God defined in first John, he said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospered. So, I wish above all things, tell John to we say that you prosper, that is physical, and be in health. You are not falling sick. Even as your soul prosper, you are born again. So, this is the package that comes out to make, it pro to make you prosper. What is the use of having the, all the money and you can't even eat? What is the use of having all the money and you are admitted at the hospital? Hallelujah. But in the context of what I'm talking about, I'm talking about financial blessing. 
And some of us here, the financial blessing we are dealing with, uh, for you to prosper, you have to deal with generational poverty. I'm teaching. So, it is not just a matter of the fact that you are not prospering, but something from your background is fighting it. And that one, you need to engage fasting, engage the breakers anointing to silence the spirit of poverty. So I will put it this way. Some of you, when you are going to marry eh, and you notice that nobody has ever had a wedding in your family and you are the one to have the first wedding. The thing is that your wedding is not just a ceremony. It's a breaking of generational curse. So if nobody has ever been a millionaire in your family and you are first to be a billionaire, then it's not a matter of just making money. You are breaking a generational curse. And that one fasting must come in. Joel chapter 2 verse number 15. Follow me. Joel chapter 2. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Huh? Sanctify a fast and call a solemn assembly. Why are we supposed to do that? God came and said that stay there. Stay until I tell you to move. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Look at the New Living Translation. Watch this. I'm picking some portions of that scripture. Blow the ram's horn in Jerusalem. Announce a time of what? Fasting. Call the people together for a solemn meeting. Why? Verse 18. Look at verse 18. That is why I say, stay with me. Don't move. I say verse 18. Now, then the Lord will pity his people after we are fast. The Lord will pity his people and, and, and jealously guard and honor his land. Come to, new, come to King James before you go to New Living Trust. Then, then would the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. We cannot, he cannot do that until we fast. Because that fasting was a commanded fasting. Israel was in poverty. Things were going. The Lord said that gather the people and call a fasting time. And the purpose of that fasting is to break the spirit of poverty. Now look at verse number 19. Look at verse number 19. Watch this. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn. That means they didn't have corn. And wine and oil and you shall be satisfied. So that fasting was breaking poverty. The purpose of this particular fasting was to release the breakers anointed to deal with the spirit of poverty. In this fasting, may you break permanently the spirit of poverty. Every spirit of poverty in your mother's house. Every spirit of poverty in your father's house. Your father's mother's house. Your father's father's house. Your mother's mother's house. Your mother's father's house. May it break by the breakers anointed. Once it's broken, you can have access. It is called hindrance. It is called barrier. It is called opposition. It is called setback. And you must engage the break. So that means that some of us from this part of the world, until we engage in fasting, there will be a limit on how much money we should have. Because you are dealing with generational poverty. Amen. Come to the New Living Translation and look at it. Okay, let me finish the King James first. Let me finish the King James. I've not finished. And he said, I will give you a wine and oil and you shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the hidden. Now, also for poverty brings reproach. Poverty brings. There is nothing glorious about poverty. I am surprised people want to celebrate it. Poverty has sent people to the grave before they are tired. Yeah, there are people in the hospital, they just have to provide 1,000 gallon CDs and maybe the patient will be healed, but without that money, they die. There is no glory in poverty. You have to, you have to, you have to fight it with all the spiritual strength you have. There is no glory about poverty. In fact, poverty is so stubborn that it makes wisdom become useless. The Bible says poor man's wisdom is despised. And his words are not heard. So wisdom minus poverty. Oh, I love what Archbishop Benson of it, the whole blessed memory said. He said, even anointing without money is equal to annoyance. What, what are you going to do? How will you preach? If God sent you to Australia, will you go there with tongues? No. Sometimes when we go to do invasion, the, the, the hotels we book and the hall, sometimes we pay over $15,000 a day. You can't treat the gospel with poverty. Let me not take you to abroad. Do you know that if you go and rent National Theater 
or international conference center, eh? You pay about forty something thousand. We went to um, UPS. Do you know how much we paid for one day? So the gospel cannot be preached, and the gospel Jesus assignment cannot be fulfilled with poverty. It's not possible. The reason God wants to prosper you is to advance the cause of the gospel. Yeah. Reverend Jesus was prophesying last Friday that we should go to China. Do we go there with tongues? And I am Okolaba, Emirate. Please open the door. Go to the airport and go and speak in tongues and sit in Emirate and see what will happen to you. Or you go to shop right and speak in tongues and say, Makuda Baya, I came to gather groceries. Go there. The next thing you see is the security. The next one is the police. The next one is this, the cell. He says, a madman has come here. So nothing is accomplished with poverty. You can, oh, let me go deeper. Your marriage can break because of poverty. This is what one of my friends, Richard Roberts, said. He said, all marriage problems are to sex and money. The money started first. And the woman said, after all, you are not giving money. What, what do you want to enjoy? And that's where the trouble starts. May heaven break every spirit of poverty on us. There are some guys sitting here, they should have been married last year. They have been courting for eight years. The reason is poverty. Because wedding cannot be done with tongues. It's not just a wedding. You must rent a house. One bedroom. 300 Ghana CDs a month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get a kitchen. It's not just a house. Get a bed. If you don't have a bed, grab buy a mat. I don't know why you love poverty. It's a mentality you have to fight. So God declared this fasting and God told them. He said, once you fast and pray, I, the Lord, will answer and say unto his people, behold, I will send you corn. What is corn? Go to the New Living Translation so that the Lord will reply, look, I am sending you grain and new wine. In that time, I wish I would get you the symbolics and olive oil, enough to satisfy your needs. Huh? You will no longer be an object of mockery among your surrounding nations. Oh, those who say amen, God is going to honor you. Sit down and close your mouth. You will no more be, you will no longer be an object of mockery. Poverty is an object of mockery. The sad one is when the poor calls you poor. Your, your case is a serious one. After check, go and, go and lie in, the, in one of the fountain water and just let the fountain pass around you. When the poor calls you poor, your case is serious. There is a realm you come to where poor people calls you poor. You are coming out of it. Yeah. That is why you have to give your way out of poverty. You have to pray your way out of poverty. I'm telling you, it's not just you. It is in your father's house. Father's mother, your father's father, your mother's father, your mother's mother. Sometimes when you look both right, left and right, all you see is poverty. That spirit can be so strong that if you want an opportunity to go to America, they will chase you there. Because you don't understand. I've seen people in abroad living in a land of opportunity. You can work and there's nothing to show. They, they don't understand that the thing is a spirit. It has followed them to UK. It has followed them to Europe. It can follow somebody from one region to Accra. Amen? You are coming out. You will not be part of it. Let your army be very loud. I say you will not be part of poverty. There is something about poverty. When even you love people, they will know. Some of you, you claim you love me, but me, I don't know. And I've never, I don't even believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That girl that is saying, no, 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 no. You, are, you know that God said that this is your wife. It's poverty. You. When you saw your shoe, he changed his mind. Because the way God created women, you need money to maintain them. The best way to keep a woman calm is to have money. No, because of hypocrisy, they won't clap. But I'm telling you the reality. The best way. Where? When a woman loves you and money is added, 
It's called reinforcement. That's what it is. You can take it. You, can you imagine your wife's birthday? You can take her to Dubai. No, you, 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 you don't need to. You, you can't touch her and say, I'm tired. It's not possible. No, you, 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 can, you can never be tired. You can touch her at 10 and touch her at 2 and 3. Dubai in a hotel, Kimpiski Hotel. When you touch and say, please, I'm tired. It means your pocket is dry. May the Lord put money into your hands. Once a while, when you have a good woman, he will close his eyes and give you some things with apprehension. He's doing it, but not from his heart. Because your pocket, you will not be broke after this fasting. I don't know what to believe. I'm giving you scriptures. God is saying that you will no longer be an object. So God sits in heaven. He saw that the people were object of mockery. So when you are poor, God knows it. When there is no money in your pocket, God knows. I'm not the one who said, God said that you will know. He's speaking through a prophet. And right now he's speaking to you through a prophet. I say you are coming out of every spirit of poverty. That's what I told you. Be a Shunammite. And start from somewhere and increase it. You, it's a covenant. You covenanted with a prophetic oil. Because belief is prophet also. And you will prosper. Yeah, that's what it is. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. The, the way you don't even want to do that, eh, it shows the way poverty is fighting you. The spirit of poverty can fight your giving. It can bring you to a place when God says give, you will never obey God. Anytime God gives you instruction to give and you are struggling to give, it means that the spirit of poverty is very strong on you. Can you imagine God told Abraham to go and sacrifice Isaac? Abraham refused to go. It is on that mountain God swear. God has never sworn again. It is only on Abraham God swear that I will bless you and prosper you. And in blessing, I will bless you, multiply, multiply. Build security around the blessing. I will curse anybody that curse you. That is the security around Abrahamic blessing. You can't curse Abraham. You can't curse his descendants. Because God said that once you start cursing those people, I, the Lord myself, will curse you. And if God is cursing you, who will deliver you from the curse? Think about it. Amen. I say you and your generations after you are coming out of poverty permanently. Can I say this? By the time you are dying in a good old age and you are writing where some will affect even your great-grandchildren. Because a good man leaves inheritance for his children, children. I was in America, they told me something very interesting that some of the wealthy people are the presidents of America. Do you know some of the people, they don't leave their will for their children. You. They leave it for their grandchildren. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So, also for like you, eh? like President Bush, mm? senior. Eh? President Bush, senior. The ch- this will is going to President Bush, genius children. That's what they do. Yeah. Because what does President Bush Jr. need from his father? Do you understand? His father was a president. He too is a president. What does he need? Uh huh. So the father may do a will for him. They don't need it. Their system is such a way that, and by the time President Bush Sr. is doing a will, President Bush Jr. doesn't need it. So he must go to the children. And those children are still enjoying their father's blessing. It's called generational blessing. Amen. All the things we fought on uh, it can be so strong that if you don't pray, once you make a little money, some family people want you to die so that they can share your property. We say we have a I have seen people in Africa, Ghana here share property and to biological brothers and started taking their own brothers to juju. Court case fighting. No. One day I was in America, there was a young boy, they brought him to TV, around 20 years. His father has left him about $20 million or something. They were interviewing him, yeah. He said, I don't need it. I want him to give it to charity. I want to make my own money. I said, hey, Bragana. <laughs> no, the boy said, white boy, so I'm Pesicano. She wants to make his own money. 
Daddy gave me some capital, but uh, I don't need it. So he's saying that all the wealth, they should give it to charity. You can imagine me and you. <laughs> huh? You hold your brother's leg and say, dear boy, me kum, me kum. That's what it is. But you are going to be blessed that you will look at those things. Oh. As I'm standing, I'm not looking at anything from my father or mother or anything. No, 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 I don't, no, no. no. Hallelujah. If my grandmother gave me lands, I didn't receive it as I don't want it. I'm going to be so blessed, I don't need a land. Hallelujah. Those land that he was giving to me those years ago, about 22 or 25 years ago, eh? If I went to you and somebody got angry and then Ubi is going to take you into warfare. Today I can buy 200 of them. I don't know how many I can buy. So you see, you have to know where God is taking you so that you won't fight unnecessary battles. Amen. Give the Lord a clap of it. I'm preaching. Amen. I declare that you will no more be a reproach. You will no longer be an object of what? Mockery. Lift one and say, I will never be an object of mockery. What is my point now? Fasting will break the spirit of poverty over your life and will prepare you for what? Prosperity. And God is saying that you will no longer be an object of mockery. Go to 24. Jump straight to 24. The reason for this fasting. The threshing floor will again be pie high with grain and the press will overflow with wine and olive oil. You don't understand. Go to the New Living Translation. Okay, this one says, The threshing floor will again be piled with high with grain, and the presses will overflow with new wine and olive. Give me the message Bible. Watch this. Hmm. And plenty of food for your body. Cyrus full of grain. Cask of wine and barrels of olive oil. Those days, if you have olive oil, then you are rich. If you go to Jesus' tomb, eh, eh, the, the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, it was also a place of wine press. Only rich people can do that. If you go to, when we go to Israel, you see it. Amen. So, the message Bible says, and plenty of what? Food. That means that you have it and be a blessing to others. Anytime you cook and all the food gets finished, you need prayer. Things that when you cook rice, eh, there should be leftovers that if somebody walk into the house, can get some to eat. Yeah. Very important. Amen. May the Lord bless you with house with guest rooms. Yeah. When you move from guest room, there you have house with guest house. Yeah. It means that one acre land, this is your house, your people live here, and then this is a guest. Three bedroom for just your guests. I used to I used to go and pray in a man's house in Kumasi. God has blessed him. His house. He never built a house to live there, both a cry, whatever, unless it's on less than one acre. It shouldn't be less than one acre. So when you go about three houses where he and his family lives, where the workers of the house lives, and then one for pastors and one for guests. This particular one is only for men of God. It's five bedrooms. The same compound with lawn tennis and swimming pools. As mommy, we have been there. It's a fact. He has, he has shelves in the house. So when they are bringing, if you have a guest, the normal guests don't sleep in where the pastors are. And the pastors don't sleep. So if you're a pastor, that is where you sleep. I have known a lot of men of God who are going to do program in Kumasi. They stay there. Because the place is more than hotel. Yeah. How many are coming to that place now? Where you are, I can't visit you. No, I can't. I wish I can come and sleep. When I sleep, you're not, do you know the deposit of anointing that will be there? I can't there. That you'll get to say seven. I can't sleep there. I can't pray. Hallelujah. When I pray, everybody will wake up. Amen. But I see you going to that place that will visit you. Amen. I went to the U.S. and I have to go and check something about uh, some school uh, arrangement. And one of my sons, he has a house. Uh, do you have any bedroom? About five or six bedroom house in a very wealthy place. Yeah, and he wanted me to come and stay. Uh -huh. 
So he said, Papa, I want to. I want to. I want to host you and your family. I said, wow, we are five. He said, no problem. Everybody will have a room. When I went there, he was the only black man in that particular lane. We stay in his house for how many? About one week. Powerful house. It's a blessing. Stay in his house. Vibration. When I was there, you could see that every principality has gone to hide. <laughs> Wake up in the morning and pray through the street. And when I left there, breakthroughs for him. All kinds of doors are being opened for him. And the Lord told me it has not even started. Jesus slept in Mary Magdalene in their house. Sorry, Mary and Martha. And listen, they are so blessed. Do you know that? <laughs> Is it one of them that broke an expensive ointment on Jesus' feet? That, that is perfume, it is somebody's one year salary. That is what Bible commentary says. Think about it. And when you have to cook for Jesus, you have to cook for him and all the apostles. And remember, some of them are fishermen. Fishermen don't just eat uh, cabbage. No, Atani, I buy a come, 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 I mean, you can imagine. Hallelujah. There is no glory in poverty. Fight it. Come out of it and be a blessing. Yeah. It is such a way that those who are blessed get more blessed. Mm -hmm. So fight your way up. The ground is choked. Come up. Amen. Verse number 25. And I'm ending with that point. I will make up for the years of the locusts. The great locust devastation. Come back to New Living or King James. Uh, come back to King James. Huh? Okay. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. So all these are prosperity. Are you getting it? Huh? I will restore the years what? I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten and the canker and the caterpillar and the palm web. My great army which I send among you. Look at verse number 26. Watch this. Huh? And you shall eat in plenty. Poverty is over. When there is poverty, you will eat in scarcity. Hey. I remember when we visited our grandmother and they cook the soup, the meat, they count it. So my auntie has come to children, my mother, then they count. So there's no room for extra. Hey. The amane, do you know amane? Eh? It's a very hard AEB. They, and they, they take it and divide it into four. That money, it has a way of dividing itself straight. You see, you don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You, you open it into two. Then some, 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 some in case, I don't know in case, bro, for, in case, come out. Then the other half, you break it, half, half. But say that they have a quarter to two, be ideas. Hey. Am I, am I preaching? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So you have one uh, aponche, small one, and one amane. And then they cut plenty uh, uh, garden eggs and okro. These are substitute for meat. <laughs> and in the case, uh, you are not permitted to chew the meat until you finish eating. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. When they these people today are very serious people. No? This one, where did they want to find this one? Now, these ones are full ones. So. You see the way our papa, you know? So you, it, it divides itself. I see you eating plenty in your house. Do you know, when we go to Israel, how many of you have gone to Israel with me? Stand up and let me see. Who is that? Oh, Anjaraba. Yes. You see the way their food is. Pastor Abed has been to Israel. I don't know why. Terry has been there several times. It's a buffet. There is no food. You can't go to Israel restaurant and the buffet, it can be like from this room, from this end to the other end. Israeli food, very quality. Salad, meat, 
face every day. Whatever you want to. And you see the shelf. And as soon as somebody is cooking it, they are behind the thing they are cooking. Ka, ka, ka. Okay, you want salad. They do it. They give it to you. Yeah. It's dry. Everything is there. Quality. Amen. It's, I'm not talking about Cantamante Chomba. I'm talking about Israel. Yeah. They do buffet, buffet. That is what they, whether it's breakfast or lunch, every food is buffet. Breakfast, buffet, everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Quality food. So not the Chomba that somebody, they use the sweat to turn the fufu. God said you eat in plenty and be satisfied. And when you do that, you will praise the name of the Lord. So poverty will not let you praise God. You cannot sit here where your creditors are looking for you and you say, I'm here and you respond. You will even double your marks so that they can't find you. You will uh, uh, praise the name of the Lord your God that he has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. May this fasting break every poverty out of you. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. I have a pastor friend. He came to preach here from a Nigerian. And God has blessed him. I asked him. He said, that's why I told people to covenant on, on become Shunammite and kingdom invested, but I don't want to. He said, prof, I have been so into a particular man of God. Even when he came to preach, he said one day he was going to sow and see to a man of God. He was crying. Yeah. And he said, I've covenanted and do the thing for over 20 years. And explosion has come. You have to put your finances and your business on the covenant too. Whether you like it or not, those your competitors who don't go to church, they have covenanted somewhere. They go to the juju people, the sorcery, the secret society, they pay. You are the only one who is trying to think those things. It's there. Everything the devil does, he copies from the church. He can only produce a counterfeit version. A lot of people are in the church doing business. The business is not under covenant. No, they don't pay tight on their profit. They don't covenant on anything. How when the devourer come? Whilst these people, some of them go and sleep in cemeteries, they slaughter cows, they slaughter this, they covenant on the business. And the one politician say, I bought Pajero for my Jujuma. Think about it. If a pastor got a car, you get angry. Bought a Pajero. Say, every month I send two cows. Have you seen a, fet- a proper fetish spirit that is slim? No. It's not the one in your hometown. That one is bread. The proper ones. Got the, every month, two cows. Amen. And the person's shop is on the left. Yours is on the right. Whilst he's doing that, you are complaining about tight. God said, there's nothing I can do for you. I told you, covenant on it. Amen. People are becoming tsunami. Some of them have done it for one year. God has blessed them. Some of them are coming up with dangerous testimonies. Hallelujah. But it's for you. Covenant your business. That business, take it. No, this what did this shop. Let me put it under this covenant. Everything under this, when you enter this gate, you can sense an anointing of prosperity. Why don't you covenant with it? It's on the ground. Yesterday, I was there, they called me, they say some apostle from Nigeria, apostle, a Nigerian apostle from Switzerland came to look for me. He wanted to invite me and he came. He said something, he said, prof, wow. He said, I've been coming to Ghana to preach for 20 years. I wanted to invite you, but he said, when I enter here, I say, half of the story has not been told. And then he said something, he said, wow. I have seen some of these things in Nigeria, but here the excellence Ask me, see, I was with you. He said, can I take a picture with you, videos, everything? And he said, there is something here. I want to go back and come and covenant on this ground. But you are here, you don't. When I tell you, hey, he's chopping our money. Yo, what do you want me to chop? Huh? Amen. Because we need the gospel to go to the world and preach. No, I'm coming to the place here. Eh? I have to travel with people and buy their plane ticket and do all kinds of things for them. Yeah. 
When I move, do you know sometimes when I go to Ivesi, I go with about 30 to 40 people. Because those people, so this time I went ushers and things and intercessors. So time is coming where we are going. Reverend Shu professor here, he said, you have to go to China. One day Chinese people invited me. There's a student, there's an university in China. They invited me to come and preach. They made a mistake. They advertised the program. What they do is that if you are in China and you are a Chinese citizen, you cannot go to church, but the foreigners can go. So the Foreign Students Association invited me, but then other Chinese people at the underground church were sneaking. When they advertised the program, do you know what they did? My, my visa was, my passport at the embassy. They gave me the visa the day the program end. <laughs> I'll go to the embassy. They have to get, they, they, so later, one one hint me that the boy shouldn't have advertised the program. He said, Nesta, when we are coming in, if the program is starting, let's say, on the 15th, come around first. Enter the country before they start the advert. Because they, they are a communist country and they fight anything about the gospel. But last, last when Reverend Sue Professor, I started praying and I saw that the revival that is going to come in China, God show me, is going to be something else. God is going to kill all the people that are fighting the church. Because, you see, it used to be in Russia and the things pack up. Every time a, communist, a, com, a, com, a communist country turn, the revival is amazing. Because I always say that no country can prosper until they experience eternal life. Then I talk about the fact that Germany was not Germany until Martin Luther was raised. Britain was not Britain until John Wesley. Now, America never became America until all the revivalists came. So I said, why is China prospering? The Lord said, the underground church is bigger than probably all the churches in Africa. It is very, because China, they are almost half quarter population. What is their population at 1.6 billion? Eh? 1.6 billion. So they are almost about a quarter of the population of the world. So the underground church, we cannot even estimate the number. And there is something about China. That is why Joseph Prince and those people, they have big churches in Korea. Because Chinese people, they don't separate religion from culture and family. That means that if this girl becomes born again, eh, his parents love him so 